Is such a thing even possible? Yes, it is. Okay. Here's a canny box. This was sent to me by Adam. And there's three filters in here. Right. Eheim Eco Pro 300. A dual bioflow filter in the medium size. And a JBL Crystal Profi E901. So we've got two different canister filters and we've got an internal filter. In this video, we're going to be concentrating on this one, the JBL 901. Check out my other videos for these two filters. Let's get started. Now those filters I've just shown you are going to be used in aquariums at two elderly care homes. So that's good. They're going to get really well set up filters, hopefully, if I can do something with them. And that will make the maintenance on their tanks a lot easier. Okay, I would class this one as another one of the heavy hitters in this series because on the face of it, it's just a standard filter, but it has got a pre-filter tree in the top. So it's a one that I get asked about all the time. I'm really, really glad that somebody sent me this because it's, it's going to be good to show you how this should be set up. And I really hope that a lot of people will find this video useful if you've got a similar filter. Awesome. Right. So let's take a look at this one. Okay, I'll bring the camera in close so you can see inside as I'm taking everything out. Our first tray is something called a pre-filter tray. Now that sits just under the pump head like that. So you see there, that's where the pump is drawing water through. So when the water comes into our filter, it goes through these two side bits first, which filter out the heavy muck, and then it goes down the side of our trays and rises back up and it comes out the middle of this tray. Next tray just has two coarse forms in, so that's not doing much. Next tray just has another two coarse forms in. Ah, and our bottom tray has the hardest ceramic media I think I've ever seen. These are literally just like marbles. Uh, yeah, that wasn't... I'm, I'm sure that's not how it comes from the manufacturer. That's not the best. So we can do a lot with this, most definitely. You know, I'm looking at that and I'm thinking that's the JBL Micro Mech Media, but I don't know, it, it, it doesn't look like a, like a proper biological media. It's just so hard, so dense, basically doing nothing. So we can take that out. Okay, so in this particular filter, we've got four trays. One, two, three, and the pre-filter. Four. If you notice, pre-filter tray a little bit wider than the media trays and that's because the water needs to come down either side through these coarse foams out of these vents down the outside of our media trays to the bottom and then up through the media trays and back out through the middle of the pre-filter tray so we'll take Ooh, we'll take that pre-filter off and we'll concentrate on these three main trays. Just forget about that pre-filter tray for the time being. And we will get these old foams out of the way as well. Don't need those. Now hopefully you'll be able to see, but there's little fins on the inside. One there, one there, and there's some around the sides, well, some around all the sides. That's to keep our bottom tray just a little bit up off the bottom of the filter. And that gives us a little bit of space to put some primary settlement media. And for that, we're gonna use our old favorite Eheim Mech. Tiny little tubes made of very hard ceramic material, which can go in the bottom, and direct the water flow all over the place and hold heavy muck in the tubes. Because of the pre-filter tray, we won't have as much heavy muck as normal, 
we've got a little bit of space down there, we may as well fill it. There you go, that's it there. Just little hard tubes made of a ceramic material. Now because those fins in the bottom of there aren't very tall, we're just going to get one layer in the bottom of here. Okay, that should give us our correct height. There you go. I'll just put all these back together and test the height. Top goes on, no problem. Now we can concentrate on the bottom tray. We could just add one of these coarse foams that came with this, but unfortunately it's got a cutout in the middle, which isn't ideal. And they are extremely coarse. I mean, I can see perfectly through there. That's not ideal. Too coarse. Therefore, we're just gonna use a piece of pond foam well, that's the stuff that's like profile cut. It's got bumps and dimples on. Now, that gives you a lot of surface area because you're going to be putting it in this bottom tray, bumpy side down, so when the water hits it, it's got a huge surface area to hit. That works out pretty well because it's a square tray. That's good. And we'll just use a very sharp knife and we'll just cut around there. Okay, let's take a look at that. Yeah, that's a good fit. That's a good fit. We've cut it slightly bigger than this tray. So when it goes in, it goes in nice and tight. So that one is in the bottom of our bottom tray, bumpy side down. And on top of that, we're gonna put a medium density foam. And we're just gonna cut that in exactly the same way. Now you can always use a marker pen on the blue foam and just, just mark that out and then use a pair of scissors. That's a little bit easier than using a knife, but if you are using a knife, just make sure that you cut away from yourself and you have a piece of cardboard down to stop you slicing into your desk. I tend to mark it out with a knife and then just finish it off with the scissors. So this is our next layer and that goes in there. Again, that's a really, really good fit. So now we've got coarse and medium, both bumpy side down. And the good thing is, when you put a bumpy foam onto a flat foam, you end up with cavities in there and that settles out a lot of heavy muck. And that just extends the maintenance times. Everything we're doing is to maximize the filtration, but at the same time, also maximize the, the time between maintenance. You know, on a, on a normal on a normal tank, you'd probably check this once a month. If it still looked pretty clean, give it a clean out. Check it six weeks later. If it still looked clean, again, clean it out again. Check it eight weeks later. Just extend those times as long as possible. Dirty filters clean better than clean filters, especially where the foams are concerned. If your foams are brand new, a lot of the water is just going to fly straight through them until it starts to get a little bit clogged up and then it catches a lot more muck. And you know what's coming next, it's the fine pad. This one again is just a pond fine particle matten. They're a hell of a lot cheaper than aquarium ones and you can get numerous sets of foam out of one 17 by 11 piece of fine particle matten or foam. They generally come in sets as well. That one goes on the top. There you go, that's all our mechanical filtration. Coarse, medium, fine. And that means that when we drop that back into the filter, like so, all of the muck is kept down in this bottom part. And that keeps our media clean, that is so important. A lot of people will tell you to put the fine particle matten or the, you know, the, the white fine pad that we've just cut as the last thing that the water hits before it leaves the filter. 
There's no point polishing water after the biological process. You've got to do it before if you're using good media. Because the last thing you want, I mean, basically you're trying to hold all the muck back behind that fine pad. If you do that in the bottom of here, all the crap settles out in here. It doesn't get to your media, which is going to be in these next two trays. If you have it in the top, it holds all the fine muck in your media, clogging it up, making it less efficient. Therefore, ammonia goes up, nitrite goes up, nitrate goes through the roof. Right, our next two trays are simply just going to be filled with Biohome Ultimate. Okay, and I've got my little black book as well because I do keep note of all the filters that I've ever had dealings with and how much each tray will hold just so I know how to advise on you know setting things up and how much media people need. I think one day I'll publish all of these on my website because that'll be quite a useful resource and it'll save me answering 50 emails which are pretty much exactly the same every week. And 935 grams. We could get a little bit more in there if it was neatly packed. So we'll say a kilo. One kilo per tray. We've got two available trays for media. That gives us two kilos in here. So we've already got our foam tray in the bottom of here. We'll add our media trays now. Okay. Again, we're just going to check that this top goes on. Yeah, that's okay. Okay, that's really the important part of our filter done. That's the bit that's going to make sure that the water is clear and also healthy. That's our pre-filter tray. That's what goes in the top. And remember, water hits these two side pieces first. They strain out really, really heavy muck. Goes down to the bottom, up through our trays, out through this middle bit. And presently, this middle bit has just got two pieces of coarse foam. Really, that's doing nothing because anything that passes past that fine pad is going to go right through the media and right through these and be caught second time round. So we don't need those at all. And into there, we've got two choices. We can either, well, actually, we've got three choices. Probably four choices. We could either go with just another coarse pad but it wouldn't be doing anything other than what the existing ones did. So I think we can rule that out. We could go with a medium density pad, which would catch medium to fine muck. That would be okay. Or we could go with a fine pad. That wouldn't be a good idea because anything fine would be held down in our media, which we don't want. So I think we can rule all those out. And what we're going to go with is that. That's a carbon impregnated pad. You can just put loose carbon in there if you want. But I'm actually going to go with a pad. And I'm going to use one of these old foams as a template. Okay, now we've got a carbon impregnated pad. Now we can fit two of these in here because they're only about mm, three quarters of an inch, maybe 20 mil thick. And this tray is approximately inch and a half or 40 mil thick. So we could get two of those in here. See? We've got space there. Now we don't really need two carbon pads. One will be enough. Put two in if you want. But I'm actually going to put a little bit more media in here. And then the pad on top. And remember, the more media we can get into a filter, the better. Because that is what's holding your bacteria. Okay, so we've got about 300 grams in there. I'll just make a note of that. And if you didn't want to go with a carbon pad, you could just fill the center of this pre-filter tray all the way up with media, in which case you get about 500 grams in. Good. Awesome. There you go. Drop that in the top. Make sure that fits. Which it does. Very good. And I 
that's our filter done. I'll just bring it in for a close up and I'll take the trays out one at a time just so you can see how they're laid out. Okay, that's our top tray, pre-filter tray that is. What hits these side sections first goes down and down the side of there we've got a gap. That's where the water goes down. It goes down the side of the trays, on the outside of the trays, to the bottom of our filter. So there we've got a media tray, another media tray, and then our foam tray in the bottom. And our initial settlement media in the very bottom of the canister. So the water goes down, hits that first, comes up through coarse, medium, fine. into our biological media, into more biological media, and if I tip the pre-filter tray upside down, you'll be able to see through the middle there. There you go. That's where the water comes up. It rises up through the filter, and then it goes through a little bit more media and a carbon impregnated pad. Into our pump, back out to the tank. Awesome. Okay, so there you go. Filter set up, ready to go, ready to be as efficient as it possibly can be. And for those people who are possibly gonna ask one of two questions, um, here are the answers to the questions I think I'll most likely be answered on this. Only 200 liters. Yes, only 200 litres for a normally stocked tank if you've got two kilos of the biohome in. And that's because when I talk about filtration, I'm only concerned with the full cycle, not half a job. Any filter will do half a job. Aerobic bacteria that's responsible for reducing ammonia and nitrite lives absolutely everywhere. It's in your substrate, it's, it's on all the ornaments, it's in the water, it's on the glass, it's in the filter. It's pretty hard to kill it off, and it is so quick to establish. Any filter of a decent size should enable you to have zero ammonia and zero nitrite. It's the other bit of the cycle that's the hard part, and that's why I only consider that to be a full cycle if the nitrate is removed, if there's enough home in here for anaerobic bacteria as well. That's the key thing. They're the difficult ones to cultivate. They're the ones you need a specific structure in a media to support enough anaerobic bacteria to bring that nitrate down. So really, if we weren't concerned about nitrate levels, and we're prepared to do huge water changes every other day, we could say that this might be suitable for 500 litres, 600 litres, 1,000 litres. We could pluck a figure out the air because we really shouldn't have any ammonia or nitrite. It's easy to control. So that's why you'll hear me talking about low numbers whenever I'm talking about how much water, you know, what size of tank a specific filter will cope with because I'm talking about a full cycle, I'm talking about proper filtration. And the second question I think I'm going to be asked is, because of that pre-filter tray, is this filter the same as the Eheim Pro 3s and Pro 4s? Yes, it is, because that... That just works exactly the same. Water comes in, goes down the side of your pre-filter, down to the bottom, and then rises up through the trays and out through the middle of the pre-filter. Just leave the pre-filter in that one exactly as it is. It's not really as versatile as the JBL because you haven't got that split sections, you know? Um, so in the Eheim, just leave the pre-filter as it is. Bottom tray with your foams and fine pad, media above that. It's just that simple, you know? You're doing everything in the right order. And in this one, we've got everything in the right order. We've got a little bit of mechanical filtration in the top. Forget about that, it's not gonna do much. We've got mechanical filtration in this section. We've got biological filtration in this section. And in the very top, we've got chemical filtration. So we're gonna get the muck taken out of the water. The water's gonna be made healthy and then any residual fish treatments, colour from bogwood, heavy metals that happen to be in the water, should get taken out by the carbon pad. But just remember that pad will need to be replaced every seven to eight weeks because carbon doesn't last forever. If you leave it in too long, it 
draws all the pollutants in and then it starts to let them out again and that can do more harm than good so always keep on top of your carbon never let it go more than two months if it's right in the top of the filter it will last that two months because it's going to be kept in pretty clean water I have seen filters where the carbon is the first thing that the water hits so it just gets totally clogged up it basically just becomes a fairly useless biological media instead of a chemical media very very quickly but in most circumstances you don't even need that if the filter set up right you can get away without the carbon okay it feels like I'm beginning to ramble now so if you've enjoyed this video hit the thumbs up button share it wherever you want and I shall see you next time there's plenty more in this series to come